Hello and welcome to section 1.2 payment processor implementation. So we're going to implement the centralized payment processor using an account model um, and learn about state and state transitions. A very fun topic. One of my favorites. Um, everything is information. It's a little preview. So we've got our state and our state is a bunch of ones and zeros. Remember ones and zeros are the fundamental Thing that you know this is all you need for information everything is ones and zeros now this ones and these ones and zeros can represent a picture of a doge they can represent a snapshot of the universe even you know you can represent the physical space our physical lives in information and it can even you know it can represent a snapshot of Conway's game of life which is it's is itself you know maybe a universe maybe there's living beings in, in, in some simulations and it can also represent our application state so it can represent the balances and nonces of our super duper cool central payment processor now there is the second piece right the state is a snapshot this the state transition function is how we move from one moment to the next so it takes in a state and an input and it returns a new state out of that right the next state so let's see what that kind of means so for instance we can have apply hat that's our state transition function and we can have our state which represents a photo of our little cute doge now we'll take that photo and we'll drop it in as the state input to our apply hat function and then we'll take a hat and we'll put that in as the input and boop pops out a cute doge wearing a hat. And so that's our state number two, right? So we, we've, we've just transitioned, we've gone from moment to moment and we have a new state. So great. So the next one is, let's see, um, how about our universe? Well, we can we can kind of like our snapshot of our universe is a state and apply the laws of physics is kind of a cool state transition, right? So we can, we, you could imagine how like, you know, maybe the universe is just a whole lot of information and the laws of physics are this big state transition function. And the reason why I say this is not because it's necessarily true, but more because this is something, this is a way you can represent all of your applications. So this is not only for building, you know, blockchain stuff, but whenever you're conceptualizing the creation of a uh, to, you know the manipulation of information which is basically everything well you can use this conceptual framework of okay I have state and I have state transitions and I can use these tools you know for basically everything um, but maybe a simpler version is Conway's game of life right this is something that was created um, back you know many many years years ago to kind of simulate the creation of, of life forms and and it has very simple rules maybe like eight rules or something something like that and we just play it forward so let's we can take our our state right our initial state of Conway's game of life and it'll return the next state so you'll notice that they're they look a little different um, and then we can you know do this again right we can take take the next one we can pop out the next state pop out you know put in put it in again pop out the next state right you can see how it's changing eventually we you know just keep doing this and now we've actually got you know a simulation of a universe in some ways um, and so this is all you need right all you need is like state and state transitions and this is the con this is a fundamental building block and the reason why it's so important is because when we're building these blockchains we're going to want to use you know we're going to want to touch the fundamental building blocks of information and computation because that will give us our you know the easiest way to reason about these these systems efficiently so now let's go real practical and let's think of our actual payment processor. So we've got a genesis state. So the, the first state, the initial state is called a genesis state. Also, you know, genesis block. This is where the genesis word comes in with these blockchains. And our state transition function is a little bit more complicated than the you know ones we went over so far. It's got its apply transaction. So it's actually pretty simple, relatively speaking. We've got our state and we've got our transaction and we basically want to apply it. And we're, we're gonna, you know, go through what that really means. So there are two transaction types. There's mint and there is send, right? Now mint can only be created by our central payment processor, right? They can create new money and they can, you know, at, at their whim, which is a little scary. And that's why we decentralized that. Um, but anyone can send, right? Anyone who controls funds can send. 
So here are actual transactions, right? And you'll notice these are some hashes, right? And these are more hashes, right? These are these are uh, actually the the these are accounts, and these signature these are nice signatures, right? So we're we're kind of already using the crypto um, uh, concepts that we've we've uh, talked about so far, um, and we can say that this is a little like a stack of transactions, right? You can see this is you know these correspond to three there are three transactions right here. Um, now we are going to first start out by applying our first transaction. So we're going to grab this thing um, with the amount and where it's it's a mint transaction, you'll notice. And we're going to plug in our Genesis state. And we're first going to check the signature. So what does this actually mean? Well, we have our signer and we're going to check the we're going to like recover the signer's address. And then we're going to check does the signer equal the transaction uh, sender. So we want to make sure that this signature is coming from the sender of the transaction, right? This is very critical. Now, you know, transaction from. And if it's not equal, then we say invalid signature. But in our case, it is equal to the, the PayPal, uh, or, or it, it is equal. So next, we're going to check the nonce. So we're going to say, OK, let's look at this nonce, and we're going to check our state. Remember, we went over the nonces in the previous section. But we're going to make sure that this transaction basically you know, is the right uh, uh, transaction. Uh, the, the, you know, this is our first transaction or our second transaction. In our case, this is our first one, right? The nonce is equal to 0. So we've not sent a transaction before. Now we're going to check, we're going to apply our mint or send transaction. So first, this is a mint transaction. And so what we're just going to do is we're going to say, okay, the transaction context two, so whoever we're minting coins for, their balance is now equal to uh, their old balance plus the new, the, the transaction contents amount. So in our case, the amount is a 100. So now this address, right, is equal to to the to 100 right because it was zero before and now it's you know we added 100 to it now in other transactions we might have a send and a send is a little bit trickier basically first what we're going to do is we're going to check that the person who is sending has enough coins to actually send it right we want to make sure that the 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 um uh if the transaction contents is ha is sending more coins than they have then we're going to throw an error we're going to say not enough money and if, on the other hand, if it actually is enough, then we're just going to, you know, subtract the balance from the from, and we're going to add balance to the to, right? We're, we're just, you know, updating our balances. And remember, we've gone over this in, in this chapter overview, but now this is the kind of nitty gritty all the code. And remember, this code is implemented in online. You can see a link kind of below. Um, so then we're going to increment the nonce. So we're once again, we want to make sure, OK, this is our first transaction. So nonce is 0. Then we're going to add 1. So now the nonce is uh, the expected nonce is 1. And we're, you know, go, we go on. And so that gives us our replay protection. Then we'll return a new state. And so this is what our state looks like, right? It's it's got a, um, a, a you know an address which is the the account um, name that's the identifier of you know whoever owns these coins and the balance and the nonce. Very good. So now we're going that that was our first state. And so now let's grab our our next uh, transaction, plug that thing in, and let's plug in the state that we we just generated right here. And boom, we've got a new state. So we've now sent, remember, you'll, you'll notice this is send 65 from this address to this address. And you, so you'll notice that we've gone from this address to that address, although I think those addresses might be different. Oops. Um, anyway, so <laughs> now we've got our state at time one. And we're going to drop in this transaction and that state, and boom, we've got a we've got a, a, a yet again another state. And so we, you know, you'll notice 65 uh, became um, uh, uh, I believe 10 or something. I these addresses, I think I got a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, no, 35. Anyway, um, so you'll notice. So we're we're just sending sending money. Great. That's exciting. So <laughs> we, we've done it. The, there's our kind of like our state and our state transition function. And that's all we need for, for our application. Now, here's an interesting topic, the history versus the state. So the history is the genesis state and then an ordered list of transactions, right? All of the transactions since the genesis. That's what our history is. So that's all the information of 
you know, our, 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 you know, our blockchain or our central payment processor, whatever. And, you know, that kind of looks like this. We've got a Genesis state and a whole bunch of transactions. And these transactions, at least in blockchains, are often contained in blocks. But they're, once again, they're just an ordered list of transactions. When, when we say blocks, that's just a bundle of transactions. Now, this whole thing is the history. On the other hand, we have state, and the state is the remembered information. So basically what this means is this is, in our case, the account balances and nonces. So this is the information that is required for like, you know, moving to the next step. And this is, this is what we remember as our application. Now, we've got the history and the state, and let's actually, you know, play this through a little bit. So we've got first our Genesis state. Let's say Alice has 10 coins. And now the, at Alice is going to send two coins to Aparna. And so we check our state at uh, transaction one um, is Alice with eight and Aparna with two. So you'll notice this is our history and this is our state. And we're going to go again. Now we've got a new state, state number two, and we've got our history here. So we're, you know, we're sent two to Bob and then we're going to send, you know, Alice is going to send two to Aparna. Alice is going to send two to Bob and Alice is going to finally send the rest that she's got to Aparna. And so we've got five different states and we've got this as our full history. Now you'll notice, right? History, state. And the interesting thing is that the history is actually significantly longer than the state. It is large compared to the state, which is smaller, right? We're not remembering all the information. You'll notice that we sent, you know, three times we sent values to Aparna, right? But in our state, we don't know if we sent six all at once or we sent six three times. So there is, you know, literally less information that we remembered. We are only remembering the current balances. Now, this is important because in Ethereum, for instance, the history is like 250 gigabytes or, you know, maybe more, at least as the at the time of talking about this. And the state is three gigabytes, right? A huge difference between the full history and the current state. And so this is where it kind of warp sync and all these different kind of, you, if, if, you, if you trust that the state is correct, then all you need to do is really download the state. But then how do you actually trust that the state is correct if you didn't verify the history? So this is the kind of like interesting interplay between these two concepts. And so it's good to remember them. Um, and it turns out that three gigabytes is already pretty big. We don't like the fact that the state is growing so fast. And so there's rent proposals, right? We're, we're saying, okay, the, we're going to charge rent if you create, if you uh, bloat the state. And so this is the, you know, you can look this up. This is kind of fun stuff. They have YouTube videos about it. Awesome. So that is history versus state. That is our application pretty much complete uh, state and state transitions. Some of the most important stuff. So next up, we're going to be talking about replay protection. And so once again, we're going to be, you know, protecting against this, this resubmission of transactions, which we really, really do want to avoid. Um, cool. See you next time. Oh yeah, a lot of love.